the house of God. Welcome to our Thursday fellowship, which is prayer meeting and Bible studies. God bless you. This is Reverend Ibero Batrockman, and I also welcome you on behalf of Pastor Solomon and all the saints of God that worship with us. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's go straight into prayer by starting with praise. You know, we always have to enter his presence with praise, worship, and thanksgiving, adoration. So I would like for us to go to Isaiah chapter 12. We will read from verse 1 to 5. And we will stand on that word and give God glory. Actually, it has six verses. So let's read the whole of Isaiah chapter 12. Amen. So, and in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord, I'll praise thee. Though thou was angry with me, thy anger is turned away, and thou comfortest me. Behold, God is my salvation, and I will trust, and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my son. He also is become my salvation. Therefore with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And in that day shall ye say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitant of Zion. For great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. To Jesus. Glory. Let's begin Hallelujah. to praise God. Hallelujah. Let's say that this is that day that we say in that day. I know it's talking about a, 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 a prophecy about the Messiah in his kingdom in the coming time of our Lord millennium. But today we can still say in this day. So in this day, we want to praise the Lord. Why? Because he has done marvelous things. Think about what he did for you and for your household, for your community and for the body of Christ. Think about his goodness. And so today, today is in that day for us. So come together. Let's begin to praise the Lord. Oh Lord, we praise you. We worship your holy name and we honor you today. Great God of wonders, you who does not cast us out, you who is very willing to forgive us, you do not stay angry and show your wrath forever. But in every time, Jehovah, when we come into your presence and cry, you forgive and you wash away our sins. You move upon us with goodness and mercy. You move upon us with kindness, oh God. Father, today we worship you. We thank you because you our salvation. Lord, you are our salvation. Because of you, we are saved. Because of you, we walk in victory. Because of you, we are called the righteousness of God. Because of the work of salvation. Lord, you are the one that delivered us. You salvaged us from destruction, from curse, from satanic oppression. You salvaged us from, from evil, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, so we thank you because indeed you are our salvation. Yes. You are the only one that we can put our trust in. Lord, you are the one to whom we can put our confidence. You are our confidence. Bible said in Psalm 65, you are the confidence of those that are even in the uttermost part of the earth on the waters at the end of the earth. Lord, today, even right here, we declare you are our confidence, and that is why we trust you in the name of Jesus. We are not putting our confidence or hope or trust in the Son of Man, or in princes and kings, or dignitaries, people with political powers, or whatever. Father, but our praise, our trust, and our hope is in you and you alone. Hallelujah. Amen. You are our confidence, and we worship you. Father, we appreciate you today. You are hope where there is no hope. Where the enemy said you got, he got us, and where there is no room for escape, nothing inside, you are our hope. Hallelujah. You bring hope in a hopeless situation. We thank you. 
When the enemy say we are defeated and there is no helper, you will help us readily, Jehovah God. With you, there is never an end that we can do nothing because we have a God who does not change. We have a God who is willing and who is always pleased to help us. We have a God who said he will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, you, not only did you make the promise, you have been true to your promise in Jesus' name. We bless you, O oh God. We appreciate you, Father. We come here to glorify you. In the name of Jesus, for indeed you are our strength, Jehovah God. We can do nothing except through you, Jehovah God. The Bible says we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Why can we do all things? Because the Lord Jehovah is our strength. We thank you, Jehovah God. How would we be able to stand against the principalities and powers of darkness if you are not our strength? How can we deal with Satan and his wiles if you are not our strength? Lord, we thank you, O God, that you are the one that gives strength to our spirit in our inner man. You give us spiritual muscles, hallelujah, that by our word we are able to overcome the kingdom of darkness. My God, we thank you and appreciate you. And we are celebrating you today. We come in this house with joy. We come with thanksgiving and gladness of heart. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And through our joy in you, we draw water. We draw water from the wells of salvation. Yes. Father, the water of life come from the wells of salvation. Hallelujah. 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 We are giving you glory. Amen. Without water, there is no life. Amen. So we draw life from salvation. The wells of salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you today. You. We bow down to you. We worship you, Father. We come from every area and we say you are lifted up. The sunlight has said, oh, be lifted, oh, Lord, above all the gods. We cast our crowns and worship you. Lord, we are saying, we are crying with the saints in heaven, the host of heaven and the saints on earth. Oh, be lifted, oh, Lord, above all other gods. Oh, be lifted above all the heavens. Oh, be lifted above all Lord, be lifted above every name, every authority, every kingdom, every dominion. Be lifted above every power, Lord. We bow down to you, Jehovah. As the host of heaven, as the 24 elders in the book of Revelation, uh, cast out, cast their crown on the golden uh, 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 gla glassy floor. You know, Lord, we are casting our crowns. We are bowing down. As the worship, we worship. We humble ourselves. And we bow down and worship you. You are our Yahweh. You are eternal king of glory. You are our everlasting father. You are our self-existing God. The one that never fails. The God that does not wax old. You know no beginning and no ending. You know the, be you end, the end from the beginning. And Jehovah, you are the only one that can say it is over and it is over. Yeah. When you close the door, no man can, sh can open it. Yes. And when you shut the door, who is that person that can open it? No when your hand is stretched forth, who can shut in it, Jehovah? No when you have spoke, who can disannul? No Dear God, you are all in all. Yeah. And we bow to you today. As we worship the Trinity, as we bow to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. And we say, take glory, Father. Take glory, Jesus, Lord. Take glory, precious Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Today, we enter the presence of the Lord with singing and adoration in the name of the Father. The Bible assures us, and we believe it, that it is only through the name of Jesus that we can enter into the presence of God. In fact, the Bible admonishes us to enter boldly into the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To find help, grace, and mercy in time of need. When we enter the throne through the blood of Jesus and through the broken veil of his body, as it says in, in, in Hebrews 8 and 9, today we humble ourselves. And so we enter in the name 
of Jesus. We're entering through the blood of Jesus. We enter through the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for our forgiveness, for our cleansing, for our sanctification, for our healing, the blood of Jesus. It is through the blood of Jesus that we have entry and we become the children of God. So tonight, uh, we enter through the blood. We walk through the pathway of the blood. Uh, yes, Jehovah, behold myself and my brethren. Entering into your holy presence uh, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, in worship and adoration, we are here lifting up holy hands together. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus, we worship you. Mahalabo Seke, we appreciate you for your death on the cross and for the fact that by faith in you and by our faith in the finished work of the cross, we are justified. We are not justified by, by work. We are not justified by our own wisdom or, 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 or our own, uh, uh, my God, uh, gallantry. We are justified by faith yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes. And so we give you glory. We celebrate our Lord Jesus. We say let his banner be raised Hallelujah. and his glory be seen. Hallelujah. We declare the blood of Jesus Hallelujah. over the house. Jesus. We say we are more than conquerors, O God through the blood, through Christ who loved us and shed his blood for us and became a curse that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The one that took our sins and causes and nailed them on the cross. That same Jesus Christ who died and after three days he resurrected. After three days he rose and after many days after proving to the people, his church, that his reason, infallible uh, test, uh, 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 macarabo, witnesses and proof. He was caught up and he went back up to heaven. And he seated at the right hand of the throne of majesty, interceding for us. Hallelujah. Administering unto us as our high priest. Hallelujah. In the name of that Jesus, we are here today declaring that we are overcomers through his blood. And by the word of our testimonies in Jesus, and we just lift our hands. Just worship the Lord God. Worship him. Worship him who created everything. Worship him who was before all things. The Bible says all things were made by him and for him. Nothing was made without him. Nothing. Nothing was made without him. Everything was created for his pleasure and his pleasure alone. Therefore, tonight we give him pleasure by exalting his name, by honoring him, by submitting to him, by humbling ourselves under his mighty word, by saying, Father, do your work in us by saying yes to his leading, yes to his commands, yes to his words, yes to his righteousness, yes, yes, yes. Lord, we say yes. We say yes to your word. We say yes to your will. We say yes to your way. Give us the grace as we say yes to back it up with action in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we celebrate you. We celebrate the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. Part of the reason we praise you is that when you are angry with us, your anger is usually turned away and you comfort us. Lord, because your word says when we confess our sins that you are faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all our righteousness. Yes. Daddy, we are saying thank you, thank you that you are the God that forgives us. Yes. And even as we enter here today, we are not hiding anything from you. We are not covering ourselves, oh God. Adam and Eve tried to cover themselves and it was futile. Lord, we won't even try because we know that we need to be naked in your eyes and before you. And Jehovah, we admit our faults. We admit, begin to admit your faults. Begin to confess and say, Lord, I am sorry. I am not making excuses. I was wrong. I fell short of your glory. I disappointed you. Lord, I failed you. Have mercy. Have mercy. Forgive me. Begin to tell the Lord to forgive. Say, Lord, I confess my sins. Not only have I confessed my sins, I repent to God and ask you to help me in Jesus name. Daddy wash away my sins according to your promise. According to Isaiah 12, let your anger be turned away from me. But rather through grace and 
must comfort me through your blood by lifting me up, by lifting and strengthening me and making me stronger than my enemies that when they come to tempt me, they will fail in Jesus' name. Father, we give you glory. We cover this atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. We release the blood over our environment because we stand in authority in the name of Jesus. We stand in dominion authority over the principalities and powers of darkness and over every work of Satan. In the name of Jesus, hey, Kaba Sahira, the powers that contradict our, our, our truth, the powers that oppose Jesus, the powers that oppose and interfere with prayer, the powers that resist the growth of church and work against the body of Christ. Hear the word of God tonight. You have been defeated by the blood of Jesus. Jesus led you captive. Your captivity was led captive to the cross. He nailed you on the cross. He made a public show of you. So you are a loser. And the Bible said, the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, of those in heaven, on earth, and underneath. And every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of the Father. We declare Jesus is Lord. He is Lord in this house. He is Lord over this ministry. He is the Lord of our lives. And we declare that Jesus is the Lord of every child of God. He is the Lord in the body of Christ. And he is even the Lord of everyone on earth. Every authority and power. Therefore, at the mention of Jesus, you must obey. You must Get your hands off, off of this ministry, off of the servants of God, off of our families, everything that pertains unto us, off of our husbands, wives, sons, and daughters, off of the believers, and off our community. We command you to take your hands off our sphere of influence, because where we are, Jesus is the head. Hallelujah. So Jesus is the head of our homes. Just begin to confess Jesus as the head of your life, the head of your household, your family, the head of everything you know. Jesus is the head of my life, he's the head of my marriage, he's the head of my household. I declare Jesus, you are the head of my son, my husband, you are the head of this church, life transformation ministries, and global intercession mission, no other name, no other power, but the name Jesus, hallelujah. Lord, we worship you and we mean it in truth. You know the heart, Lord. We declare Jesus Christ and no other in Jesus' name. And we declare you are Lord over nonviolent city in Jesus' name. No other power shall reign in this city but the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We decree the blood. The blood of Jesus over this city, over this land, over the whole of New York. New York City. New York State, United States of America, then Jesus, you are Lord. You are Lord by your blood. And we release the blood of Jesus by the same token into every nation of this world. And we declare the Lordship of Jesus. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We give you honor. We thank you, Holy Spirit. You are here with us. You are here with us. You are dwelling within us and among us. Yes. Holy Spirit, just move and have your way. Yes. We make ourselves available to you tonight yes. as we pray. Yes. And we say, let the name of Jesus be glorified Hallelujah. as we receive answers yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I believe this is our first meeting in the month of uh, October. Or am I mistaken? <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so you remember that um, this month the Lord said we need to stand up. Amen? Amen. And I just want to go to this scripture. It might sound, you know, you're like, stand up. Yeah, stand up. God is waking us up. God is waking us up in every situation. Amen? Amen. Where we have become complacent, he's saying, stand up. Where we have become overburdened by the enemy, he's saying, stand up. Where we think the enemy has gotten us and we are held and he's saying stand up. Mm. Where we, we, we lost our authority, he's saying stand up. Amen? Amen? Because in standing up, you walk in your authority. Hallelujah. Mm. 
He said in his word, he has lifted your head above all your enemies around you. Hallelujah. So as this month, as you are declaring stand up, I do want you to envision yourself in the middle of your enemies. And you are standing tall and they are all under your feet. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said he lifted your head above your enemies that rise up against you. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. And that's why he's saying, stand up. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he has perfected and has provided for everything for you. Let's go to this scripture. That's what we're going to do this evening. Just starting the, this month and declaring the word of God into this month. And before I even go, before I forget, I want to remind you, we're starting our fast for this month on Monday. It will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yes, three days, but it's going to be three days that is packed. Hallelujah. We're going to fervently seek the face of the Lord and make ourselves available and speak the word of God to manifest over us and our families. This is the 10th month month in Jesus name and in this month the Lord is saying let's go to the scripture but I want to remind you so that if you don't hear it again you remember we are starting our fast for the month of October on Monday amen, amen. but let's read Ephesians 10 that is really our anchor scripture this month from verse 1 to 18 or if you like we can get up to 19 but um i would like for everybody to go there and let's read together if you will please the word says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of god that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil amen, amen. what did he say put on the whole armor of god that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The words of the devil is the strategies of the devil. And we need to begin to stand against it. Amen? Amen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take ye, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Praise God. As you're reading, you see God says stand, but he's giving you instances how you can stand. Amen? Amen. What you need to do, the stance you need to take, how you ought to dress up. You even have dress code to stand. Hallelujah. Amen. And we'll be looking at all those as this month goes the dress code that will cause us to stand, the dress code that will allow us to war in, in victory over the enemy, the dress code that will cause us to be able to withstand the devil. Amen? Amen. It says to withstand in the evil day, like Jesus withstood in the, in the wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 14. He says, stand there for having your minds got about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, where ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's read verse 18 together. I'm praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Hallelujah. Amen. I want just to release this and we're just going to pray and you're saying, Lord, I receive your word. Lord, give me the grace to apply the principles that will cause me to stand. Amen. That's all we're praying this evening. We're not going to be that long in this prayer session. So I want you to just pray and say, Lord, according as we read in this scripture, I've seen the principles that will cause me to stand and be more than a conqueror, to withstand in the evil day. Lord, I'm asking you to help me because I want to stand. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we stand, but we're not fully up. 
Because if you're standing, but something is missing in your outfit, in your armor, then you're not able to really stand. Amen? Amen. But this week or this month, we'll be looking on those because we want to be fully armored. And this time God is saying, stand, having done all. We have done so much in the past month. God is saying for the way the, the, this year you have gone through, this is now time to stand. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's just pray. I want you to begin to ask God for the grace to stand. Begin to ask God for the grace, for open door, that you want to stand up. You want to understand standing. That you want to make sure that you are fully armored. That you want to walk in faith. And want to be able to, the, 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 the armor that will cause you to destroy and withstand the enemy's wiles. In the name of Jesus, that in your armoring, in your standing, that you will comply with the word that says, having done all. Because there must be all. The Lord is not saying you can do this but this. You can say, but God, I'm doing this, that, and that. So I can slide with this. God said you must do all. So as we are praying, you're also saying, God, in any way that there is one thing that I'm missing, in any way that my all is not complete, Father, open my eyes, open my mind to you. Show me, reveal to me, Spirit of the living God, in the name of Jesus, and quicken and strengthen me. Because this is the season for me to stand. The season of standing. Standing is the season of overcoming. Hallelujah. The season of standing is the season of victory. The season of standing is the season when you wake up and say, no way, no more. I sat too long. I'm getting up in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Makarabo shende. No wonder the song says, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand up for Jesus. Hallelujah. Marabo sheka declare, I am standing up for Jesus. I am standing up for Jesus. I want to ask you to please, let's, let's do a, a, a prophetic action by standing up. Amen. I am standing up for Jesus. I am standing up. The son says, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, put on your royal armor. Hallelujah. Makarabo se kereba shandalaba. He kontorobo shike. Eleba karaba shakaraba. As you're declaring that you're standing, begin to call the members of this ministry. Begin to call this church, Life Transformation Ministries, and Global Intercession Mission to stand in the name of Jesus, to stand with their armor, ready to defeat, ready to bring down the walls of the enemy. The armor of God, the standing that will expose the wickedness of the enemy, the powers and strategies of darkness, that they will not prosper against us in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Makarabo shende. Lebo sikeleba. Father, we are not passing anything. It could be tiny, it could be much. But what we're praying is this time, Holy Spirit, that you speak to us. We need one-to-one. -one. We need one-to-one. -one. Deal with everyone in this ministry. Deal with everyone online praying with us today. And those that will still pray as they get this video. Lord, that we will begin to deal with us and let us know that which we are failing to do. That which is causing us not to be able to rise, to stand in the name of Jesus. Lord, open our eyes. Your words say, having done all to stand. Lord, makarabo shende nebasaka. What is it? Some people, it could be just sleeping and you're not praying. For some people, it could be lack of faith. For some people, it could be gossip. It could be bitterness, envy. For some people, it could be wickedness, violence. It could be secret sins. For some people, it could be anything. Amen? Amen. You may think, the Bible says be careful when you think that you are standing. So why? Because there might be things. So that's why the Holy Spirit is the one that can reveal. Even things we don't know. We want him to show us, to reveal to us, so that we can be fully armored, so that we can stand when we say we're standing. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, we thank you. I want us to just pray for the people of God. If you realize here in this scripture, verse 19, right? Verse 18, it says, 
praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And watching thereon to with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, not just for your church members, not just for your family members, for your friends, he says, for all saints. If you remember, all saints make up the body of Christ. All saints make up the church. Pardon me, brethren. All saints make up the church of our Lord Jesus. So you want to just pray? You want to just pray for the body of Christ? Amen? Amen. Can we pray? Yes. I want to feel like we're praying. Let's not be quiet. Amen? Begin to just pray for the body of Christ and begin to say, Lord, in this season, this season that we have been, we, there's so much, Lord, uh, all kinds of attack and all kinds of insecurities and all, all, all kinds of attacks and, 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 and what can I say? The enemy just hitting us from every area, our uh, uh, health, insecurity in our communities, COVID and, and Jehovah, all kinds of things, even ill health people that we know and love in hospitals or feeling sick and people dealing with all manner of evil, Jehovah God, and that even this time, the, 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 the mistrust for government is so high. Lord, we pray for the saints to stand, oh God. This is our time to stand. Father, we pray for the saints of God, that you cause our feet to be like hinds feet. We pray for the saints of God, that our heads will be lifted up above our enemies round about us. We pray for the church, that this is not time for us to sleep and fall. We pray for the church, that we will stand and we will be guarded and guided by the angels of God. We pray for the saints of God, that the angels of God will guide us. You said that your angels will surround us, will come and camp around us and deliver us. Lord, in this season, let the angels that are supposed to deliver us, the angels of our deliverance, let them get to work in Jesus' name. Let the angels, Lord, that are to uphold us in their hands and lead us in all our ways, so we will not dash our foot against a stone. Let them get up and do their work. Because we cannot fall, Father. We cannot sleep and fall. We cannot get wounded, Jehovah. This is the time of standing, Lord. We stand in Jesus' name. I stand individually. The church stands. My brethren stand. Hallelujah. People of God worldwide must stand in the name of Jesus. We declare we are standing. Yes, Lord. Makarabo Shehila. Makarabo Shekereba Sakahila. Every concerns Jehovah God. The vaccine, Jehovah. The non vaccinated and the vaccinated, Father. Lord Makarabo Shekereba Baba Sakarabo Hika. Nikarebo Sikaraba. You know this we declare that the people of God, the sons of God, the church of our Lord Jesus, must stand in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. Yes, Lord. We stand. We stand in Jesus' name. We stand on the word of God. We stand on the promises of God. We stand on the name of Jesus. We stand on the rock of our salvation. We are standing, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And I want us to pray, verse 19. He says, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Amen? Will you not pray? Say, Lord, I ask you to give me utterance. Amen? Amen. Holy Spirit, give me utterance. Remember the Bible says that the Holy Spirit will pray for us through us by, by giving us utterance, amen? amen? That we will pray and make utterances. Now we want him to give us utterance in prayer, utterance in the word, in sharing the word. He says he will use us, give us the utterance that we may be able to speak boldly about the mystery of the gospel. 
That means you can share the gospel with somebody boldly. And you will not look for the word. Amen? Amen. Because God said, the Bible even said, when you open your mouth, he will feel it. So tonight you're praying for utterance. Amen? Amen. Utterance in prayer. Utterance in making decrees. Amen? Amen. Against the kingdom of darkness. Sometimes something happens or you have certain prayers and you don't even know the right word to use. But we're praying today that the Holy Spirit will give you utterance. Amen? Amen. Are you praying with me? Yeah. We're praying for ourselves and the saints that the Lord will give us utterance. The utterance to pray. Utterance to make declarations that will stand. Utterance to decree and utterance to confess the word of God. Utterance to profess the word of God and it stands. Utterance, oh God, to make known the mysteries of the gospel to unbelievers in Jesus' name. Lord Jehovah, my carabo, we are praying and supplicating for ourselves, for life transformation ministries and global intercession mission, and for the people of our, the, the body of Christ, that we begin to utter Christ, that we begin to have utterances that will, that will make known the mystery, that will explain the mystery of salvation, the mystery of eternal life. Jehovah, that you use us in this season to open the gates of heaven, the gates of eternal life unto many souls by giving us utterance. I want you to pray for boldness. Pray for yourself first. Lord, give me the boldness to preach the gospel. It doesn't mean if God sends you the boldness, you can preach in public, in trains, be able to hold the, 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 the mic and speak, and know that thousands are watching you, but you'll be bold. Be able to use the mic and you pray, and know that you are ministering to thousands. But whether it is that or even one to one person, may God give us boldness. Ask for boldness. Wherever you go, that you have boldness to talk to somebody about Jesus Christ. That not only will you have boldness, but the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. The right words to speak. The right scripture that will open the eyes of the blind to the truth of salvation. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to just thank God. And just thank God for meeting your needs. I know we did not specifically stand on needs, but... Standing means overcoming the powers that deprive you of your needs. Amen? So begin to declare, I have all I need through Christ Jesus. Because he provides my needs. Whether it's a spiritual need, physical need, emotional need, I want you to table it before the Lord with faith and confidence. Because we declare in, 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 in Isaiah chapter 12, verse 1, that he's in him, he's our trust. I mean in Isaiah chapter 12, that he is our trust. So this evening, just speak. Speak by faith. Say, I receive all I need. I receive the manifestation of my healing. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my open door. I don't know what you need, so I'm just making it listen. I receive the anointing. Increase in my anointing, boldness to minister the word. I receive grace to grow in the Lord. I receive grace to stand. Oh, Makarabusha. I receive favor, favor of God. I receive divine protection and security. I receive preservation of life by the Almighty God. I receive victory over the enemy. I receive, I receive, I receive authority to conquer. I receive the power of God to come against the gates of the enemy and to break it down in Jesus' name. I receive the grace and the power of God to bring souls into the kingdom of God, to break the kingdom of darkness, the, the, the prison the, of, of, of darkness, and bring souls out of darkness into light, and bring deliverance to those that are held back, and bring healing to the sick. I receive the grace of God to get my provisions that I need in the name of Jesus. Amen. I receive peace. If you don't have peace, I receive joy. 
I receive breakthrough. The things that are impossible because I believe God. I receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Just pray and begin to speak. Don't that which seem like it is impossible. That seems like it has come to an end. Nothing can be done. Now that that seems like it has damaged and then so reparation. As you speak the blood of Jesus into the situation, I want you to see it in your spiritual eyes turning in Jesus' name. In your favor and for your good. There are some writers that say, I can see everything turning for my good. You must see it before it happens. So see it. See the possibility of the impossible in your life through Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. We give the Lord glory. Will you please give the Lord a clap up from wherever you are? We're thanking God as we close this uh, prayer session in Jesus' name. Amen? And we'll go right into Bible studies. Um, you know, it, it's very good and beneficial. God proved it over and over that when God is giving you a word, write it down. <laughs> Amen. You never know the day that the Lord will decide for you to use it. So today I want to just teach or for us to share on a teaching that I received from the Lord and I wrote down, and I, from 2020, and every time I look at it and I say, Lord, when is it to, when, when should we share this? And I believe today, the Lord said to share this today. I received, I wrote this down in September 9, 2020. And the title is, Receive the Word of the Lord, or Receive the Word of God and the Benefits. Amen? Receive the word of the Lord and the benefit. I don't know if you remember last week, and I believe last two weeks in Sunday school, I brought forth the word that I said I also received from the Lord, and I wrote it down, and that day I had to speak it, and it says the word of divine engagement. The word of divine engagement. I had told you that in the military, rules of engagement is the rules that guide the warfare. I think so. You can check it out yourself. We'll continue in this and so we'll be able to be able to really dissect it as to at least to the point where we will have a good understanding of what we mean. The same way that they have rules of engagement in the military, I believe the Lord says words of divine engagement. This words of divine engagement is our ammunition, is our the way that we win battle because we are engaging with the enemy but with the word of God. Amen? That's how I understood it. At least that's the point of view that I had when the Lord gave me this. So that's why I'm interpreting it this way in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So I know that it is the word of God. So in this word of God, I said the word of God is supposed to... Uh, we're going to look at the Various things that the Word of God does. Amen? Amen? And when we're talking about the Word of God, I know the Bible is the Word of God. But remember also that Jesus Christ is the embodiment of the Word of God. Amen? Amen. The Bible is the written Word of God. Jesus embodies everything that is written here. Glory to Jesus. Amen. No wonder Jesus in himself said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are truth. And they are life, sorry. He said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So as we're going to go through this word, I would also like you to take them down because this is actually that word of divine engagement. I want to begin to encourage everybody online and here in the house. They write down some word of God. Write them, you can write them on paper or on your phone. You can have them on your computer, you can, you know the Bible tells us to, even in the Old Testament, he encouraged the people of Israel to post the word of God on their doors and everywhere, so that they would see the word every time. Why? Because the more you speak it, the more you are convinced with it. Amen? It encourages you, it strengthens you. It also, it's also spirit. So as you release the word of God, it goes, the, 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 the spirit of, the, of God moves in that word 
to accomplish that for which the Lord sent it. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says the word of God will not return unto him void until it accomplishes that for which he sent it. So when you speak the word of God, according to, that is Isaiah 55. Let's look at Isaiah 55. And I'm going to ask somebody to please find for me in the gospel where Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they are life and they are spirit. But let's look at Isaiah 55. We're going to read from verse 8. I like to start a bit, a few verses before the main thing so that we can flow. Amen. So we'll read verse 8 to 12. I usually, a woman of God told me it's always good to read at least two verses before your verse that you need and two verses after that. So that's why I, look to, I like to extend it. Let's read from verse 8 to 12. It says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. Amen. Let's pause. Holy Spirit, just speak in me. I need to say a prayer. Father, we thank you and we bless you. Holy Spirit, I thank you. You are such a good reminder. Thank you. We come in the name of Jesus. We submit ourselves to you. I submit to you to be a vessel of honor unto us, unto your servants, even unto myself, that we will learn and receive from the word that you give us today in Jesus' name. Amen. We cover ourselves in the blood of Jesus. We cover the environment in the blood of Jesus. And we come against interference and distraction in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. So we declare the spirit of understanding. So we'll continue. I'm going to go back to verse 5 of Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Please, let's end it at 13, because it's, it's exciting. Instead of the thorn, shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar, shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen? Amen? Praise God. So it says his word. He says the word that come out of his mouth shall be like the rain. Think of the rain. It comes down, the snow comes down from heaven. And he said, does not return back to me until it has done that for which I sent it which is to water the earth and to cause plants to, 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 to grow. Amen? Amen? Did you hear it? And so the plants that grow will also not just provide bread and food. You will have surplus to keep the seed so that you can sow next time. Amen? Amen. And it says as long as he, this is what he does. Say, Even so, that's how his word is. So anytime you decree the word of God, remember Isaiah 55. And so the reason why you're releasing the word of God, know by faith that that's what God says, and be sure and say for yourself that this one will not return to me void. As I speak the word of God, it must perform that for which God releases it into my life. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, you know, in, uh, before you, somebody, I don't know if you found it, please help me. But before we go there, also in the Psalms, I don't remember if it's Psalm 103, it tells us that the angels hearken unto the voice of his command. And so the word of God is the commandment of God. When you now give it voice and declare it, the angels must hear because it is God's commandment. Amen. So they will hearken and they will go and do the work because they are ministering angels. Amen. Okay, go ahead, please, for me and read. Could you 
find it? Yes. Please read it for us. Tell us where it is in the Bible. John chapter 6, verse 63. Amen. John chapter 6. Verse what? 63. I'd just, just like to be there. <coughs> we, are long time. Uh, we cannot go to. Let's go to John chapter 6. Verse 63. Can you please read it? Verse 63, John 6, 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen. Amen. Thank God. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And now when he said the spirit quickened, so if the word that he speaks to you are spirit, what's going to happen? It will quicken you. Amen. Amen. The quickening spirit will cause it to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. We'll quicken the word because the words are spirit. If it is the spirit that quickened, I want you to take note of this. And when you go home next week, you may look at it. What does it mean for the spirit to quicken? He says the spirit quickens. And so he wants to assure you that the words that he speaks to you, they are life and they are spirit. Hallelujah. So if you are speaking the word of God, knowing that they are spirit, you are assured that there will be a quickening in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So, we're going to go through some words of God, explaining what the word of God means. The way, because of time, uh, we can't do it, but really on your own. For everyone, use it to make decrees and speak and receive it into your life. I want us to look at Exodus 16, verse 4, real quick. Exodus, if you get there before me, you can please read it. Exodus 16. Verse 4. Exodus 16, verse 4. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. Amen. Or no. Remember, first God, he said, I will rain bread from heaven for you. I want you to hold on to that bread. If you have been here with us in the service on Sunday, you remember that Pastor Solomon said that uh, healing is the bread of the children. Amen? Amen? And God said, I will read that bread from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, before we even go, I know uh, this is foundation that we're laying. So another person opened First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. I hope everybody tried to participate, but here I am there. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tested that the Lord is gracious. So what does that mean? As newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. I don't need to translate it. We therefore know that the word of God is like what? It's milk. As the baby needs milk to grow, you, the child of God, need milk. Amen? Amen. Especially the newborn babes, the new believers. But hey, I, I am still a baby because I still need the, the milk. Even as an adult, we still drink milk. It may not be for our growth, but it's also healthy for us. Amen? Amen. So if the word of God is milk, we need it for nourishment. And remember in another place, it talks about it as meat. And it says that meat contains bone and, and meat. And children cannot chew bone. But adults can deal with bones. Amen? Amen. 
If you are from Africa, you know we love bone, especially biscuit bones. It's not because we don't have meat, but it's because they are also delicious and they contain some nourishment. Amen? Amen. And children cannot eat meat that has bone. So when you have children, you give them meat that don't have bone. And when you want to train them, you give them meat that can train their teeth. We do that. They can't break the bone, but they can suck on the bone. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So, I'm just waiting your appetite to understand the word of God is necessary for newborn babes. That is uh, for new believers. But even though you're not a new believer, you still need to desire the sincere milk of the word that nourishes us as Christians. Amen? Amen. Milk brings nourishment to the body. Milk contains calcium. I know it contains, I believe it also contains protein and other stuff. Calcium helps to strengthen our bones. Even if we are already grown children, their bones are developing, they need it, but us adults still need our bones to be strengthened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's go to Psalm 119. I see we're going to be dealing with scripture, so everybody please help, okay? Psalm 119 verse 103. So one person opens Psalm 119 verse 103, another person so, uh, Hebrews 5, 11 to 14. Psalm 119, verse 103. Okay. How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yeah, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Amen. Hey. Okay, amen. amen. Read the other verse. Maybe it says something again. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Amen. So he, he didn't finish it? I did. Okay, praise God. So it says your word is sweet. How sweet is your word to me? It's sweeter than honey. So you, you from this, you're already deducing that the word of God is actually food. Honey is food, right? Yes. Milk is food. Bread is food. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the word of God, you should desire it because it's sweet and sweeter than honey. Honey sweetens stuff and honey is rich. You know, we talk about that honey helps even, will help you to have long life. I don't want to go into all that. But let's just stay on the fact that honey is food. Milk is food. Bread is food. Amen? Amen. Exodus told us, God said, you rain bread from heaven. First, first Peter 2, 2 told us that uh, we should desire the pure milk and the sincere milk of the word. Psalm 119 verse 103 said the word of God is honey. So I said, the word of God is supposed to give strength. Another thing is, you know, honey gives strength. Amen? Because honey is sugar. Amen? So honey will give strength to your body. So if the word of God is honey, it will strengthen your body. Because when you don't, your sugar is low, when your glucose is low, you're going to feel weak. Let's be, I, am I, I want everybody to participate. Don't let yourself drift off in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So it says the word of God is supposed to give strength. Therefore, as you hear the word of God today, receive divine strength. Amen? Amen. So we're not we're doing this and we're making decrees into you. Yes, it's Bible studies because we are still studying the word of God. But as the Lord leads, that's what we're doing. So today, receive strength, divine strength. So you can mount up with wings like eagles. Yes. And subdue your enemies and oppressors in Jesus' name. Amen. Let your captivity become your captives in Jesus' name. Amen. Why? Because through the word of God, you ought to have strength. Amen? Amen. It says, we will, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew, uh, renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like the eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall fall and not, they shall walk and not faint. So as the word of God gives you strength, you are able to mount up with wings like the eagles. As the word of God gives you strength, you will defeat your enemies in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's go to Galatians 5.19. 
And um, another person, please, Psalm 119, verse 130. But we do Galatians 5 1 first. Praise the Lord. Galatians 5 1. While she summaries Galatians 5 1, another person will give us Psalm 119, verse 130. Galatians, Galatians 5 um, verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Amen. So on this word, you know, the word of God gives us liberty. Therefore, as you hear and receive the word of God, begin to work, operate, and manifest in the liberty that Jesus Christ has given you. Amen. Amen. So we know that in the word of God, we have liberty. And so as we declare the liberty today, you must walk in that liberty. And you must receive it. You must know that this is what the word Bible says. The Lord says, uh, receive. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to paraphrase it. Read it again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. Do me a favor, read. Oh, it's verse 1, okay. Don't worry, because that means we have to go to chapter 4. It says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, whereby Christ has made you free. Well, if you say, but this didn't say the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. If Christ made you free, the word has set you free. Amen? Amen. And so the word gives you liberty. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you must walk in that liberty. Say, I walk in the liberty. I walk in the liberty. Whereby Christ has set me free. Whereby Christ has set me free. And I will no longer, and I will no longer be, entangled be entangled in the bondage of Satan. In the bondage Please of take note of this word. These are the words of uh, engagement. Because sometimes you feel funny, you start reading this when you speak speaking it. If you're going through a situation, this might be your, this is your arrow. Remember also that the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 that the word of God is the sword of the spirit. Which means it's our weapon of warfare. It's important. Can you imagine an army? You're a soldier. You're going to war. You dressed up. You have covered yourself and everything. And you start marching off without your gun. Where are you going? Amen. Amen. This is our gun. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God is our gun. So we must take it and we must begin to use it. We have to use it because we're in warfare. I, a man of God said that Christians should know, and we have to teach it, that the day we are born into this earth, we are born into a war torn zone. A war zone. So you cannot think that you will not battle, especially when you become a Christian. Before you're a Christian, you are a captive in the war. And the Lord Jesus saved you through your salvation. So your captivity, you were, the chains were broken and, you, and you're out. You were a prisoner of war. Because you know that this war is the war between Satan and God. Amen? Amen. You remember that Satan is, is anti-anything God. That's why you even have anti-Christ. And there is a war, and that war will continue until it ends in the war of Armageddon. Where Jesus will have the victory. He already had victory, but that will be the conclusive war that will put everything to end. And so why are you a prisoner of war, or why are you in war? You are supposed to be a child of God. You are his creator. You are supposed to represent Christ. So when we are born, before we know Jesus, the enemy will hold us bondage. But he's holding us because even though we are God's own, he got us. So that's why I say we are like prisoners of war. Until God comes, until the, 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 the salvation of Jesus, which is the, the one that sets you free. Once you receive salvation, you break free. Amen? Amen? But does that mean that Satan is no longer your enemy? No. Well, I want you to know that this kind of warfare is always seeking to get you back. 
But that's why if you understand that I'm in a battle, I must have my armor. That's why he said, put on the whole armor of God. And like we said, you put on every armor and you leave your weapon of warfare, you're in trouble. Because the enemy will be marching towards you, yes. The gods may not get you and everything, but if you're not able to fend off the enemy with your weapon, with your guns, he will eventually surround you and he can tear off all that thing you have on. So that's why your, 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 your armor is important to protect yourself, but you must have your weapon and the weapon is the word of God. So in every situation you find yourself, you are to use the word of God. That's why we are decreeing. That's why we are telling you that the word of God is your word of divine engagement. You are engaging in a war, a battle. It's a spiritual battle. I said divine because you are the divine. You are using the word of God is divine. So the way you are engaging the enemy is in a divine way, spiritually, and you will win in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So let's, let's open our eyes more to understand the importance of the word. I want another person to read for us Psalm 119 verse 130. Amen. Amen. The entrance of thy word gives light. It gives understanding unto the simple. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The entrance of his word giveth light. And understanding unto the simple. So the word of God gives light. Therefore, upon the entrance of the word of God into your ears and your spirit, let your spirit, soul, and body receive an overflow of light. Amen? Amen. May the word of God that you're hearing open up your spirit and let light overflow you. Let every area of your life be illuminated in the name of Jesus. By the word of God that you receive, as the word of God enter tonight, uh, let the ministry, your ministry, your work with the Lord, and our ministry be filled with the light of Jesus Christ. You know that the word of God says also in First John chapter 1 that we use every time is, uh, uh, no, not First John. John 1. Gospel of John chapter 1. Gospel chapter 1. It says, I think it's verse 5. He says, and the light shines in darkness, and darkness comprehends it not. Amen? Amen. So you find a darkness situation in your life. Anything that's coming from Satan is darkness. Is it, is it anger? Is it spiritual interference, attack, demonic attacks? Anything that is opposite of the goodness of God is in darkness. And the word of God is light. As you begin to speak the word of God, the darkness will go in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 So this is an equipping for the sense of God. And I think the Lord gave this word over a year ago, and this is the maturity of this word to share it with the people of God because this is our season to stand. Amen. Amen. And since we know that part of our standing, we must use the armor. We must use the weapon. The word of God is weapon, and God is call, calling to emphasize the importance of his word and how we must take it and how we must use the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I have another place where I really spoke on the importance of the word. I think we have even ministered on it in the past. I, I, I ministered, like, talked on it why the word of God is bread, what bread does to your body, amen? So you have to understand that. It's strength and everything. So, but we're doing short, short, but looking at the things, what the word of God, various things are, that the word of God is to us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so let's go to John 14, 27. Gospel of John. I'm going to read it, but another person should hold should also open Jeremiah 15, 16. But I'll read the Gospel of John, chapter 14. Hallelujah. Mm. Jesus is our Lord. 
chapter 14, verse 27, he says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen? Amen. This is the word of peace. So the word of God is your peace. Amen? Amen? Therefore, upon the reception of the word of God, let peace flow to you in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let peace flow in your experiences. Let the peace that only Christ gives, the peace that the Bible said passeth all understanding. In, 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 in um, Philippians chapter 4, it is the peace of God that passes all understanding, that guards your heart through Christ Jesus, so that your heart will not be afraid, neither will it be dismayed. If your heart is afraid, if you are anxious and worried, begin to speak the peace of God. Receive the word of God in John 14, 27. In any time that you wake up at night, or you're walking and you don't have peace, and you're just going and there's too much troubling of your mind, begin to speak John 14, 27, and say to yourself, I receive the peace of Christ. He says, my peace I give to you. This is the peace that comes from Jesus, that comes from the Lord. And begin to decree it and say, not the peace of the world. When the world gives you peace, remember, they give it to you in one hand, they take it from, in, from you with the other hand. Amen? Amen. And when they say, the Bible says, when they shall say, peace, peace, just find cover for yourself because it's war. So you don't need peace from the kingdom of darkness. You don't need peace from man. You need the peace of God. Hallelujah. So you want to speak to yourself. This is uh, your cure. The cure of that, uh, what is it called? High blood pressure. This is cure to high blood pressure. This is cure to sleeplessness. This is cure to diseases and sicknesses. When the worry begins, when the enemy begins to punch you with all kinds of worrying words, you speak peace because the word of God is peace. Amen? Use the armor of peace. And say in Jesus' name, I receive the peace, the peace of Jesus Christ, according to the word of God. As I receive the peace of God, my heart should not be dismayed, and I ought not to be afraid. Therefore, I speak to you my heart today. I say, don't be afraid. Fear not. Yes. Hallelujah. Remember, we're not putting all the words today, but you can also go there and say, fear not, for I am, yes, we, the same word that God gave us, was it yesterday or this morning? He said, fear not, for I am with you. That's Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The things that take away our peace is fear. Being dismayed. Like being worried. Things just, we can't, we don't even know what to do. Amen? Amen. Situation will just cause you to be confused and frustrated. The Bible says, my peace I give to you. The Father say, fear not. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So I believe somebody should have opened Jeremiah 15, 16. Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Jer Jeremiah 15, verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. But I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. Amen. 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 Remember the first things we read, we said the word of God is bread, is food. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah said, I found the word and I ate them. How do you eat the word of God? It doesn't mean you will tear your Bible and start to chew the paper. No. Or chew your phone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let, let, let's act like we are kids and answer our own question. How do we chew the word? By reading. By reading and understanding it. 
Yeah, reading, meditating, understanding by studying. Amen? Amen. But you, you know, you chew on the word. You think on it. You don't, you may not read it. You may just want one verse. It may be one verse, it may be a few verses. And you're just waiting and saying, Lord. And you're trying to dissect it yourself. Amen? Amen. Understand what the word is saying. Understand certain there might be words there that you don't know. I have to give an example like that. And it says, admonishing one.